Hello and welcome to Frank's School. Uh, 57th day of the second year. First video of today, there'll be two. Um, Frank's School has been under some stress uh, over the last week or month because the library has been, I've built shelves. Someday I'm going to show you all this stuff, but I can see my books on the wall again, which is nice. They were piled on this table. That was hard. It's better for me now. I just thought I'd tell you. My blog. I have a blog. I haven't done much with it yet, but I'm thinking maybe it's time that I bring it to life because yesterday, Wayne Frost, uh, I mentioned him as an artist uh, uh, for, that, that lived in Brazil with me. Uh, anyway, he sent me, <laughs> a, 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 I guess he'd scanned a, a, a paper that I'd done called The Working Papers. And I don't know really what to do with it. He sent it as an attachment. I have a hard copy, but I thought, you know, maybe I'll put that in the blog. I was going to do that anyway, so maybe. All right, in the video that you're going to see, no filming of mine. You're only going to see my daughter's uh, photographs. We're leaving the Alps, uh, in her case, temporarily. Switzerland is divided into the, the uh, let's see, from where you're looking. <laughs> I can't have to turn around. Uh, here go the Alps. There's a central valley, and then there's the Jura Mountains. Well, we're going to, or we leave the Alps, quickly go across the top of the central valley by Lucerne uh, into the Jura near Basel. Um, and uh, so the land that you're going to see looks so different. It looks really like Pennsylvania. Uh, no, no really high Alps uh, there. It's going to be personal. You're going to see uh, my daughter holding a, a baby. Uh, well, that's because we, we stayed the night with Daniel and Daniel's family. They hosted us. Uh, his mother and father had come to visit us one time uh, when Daniel was a foreign exchange student here. And Sandra, uh, it was so nice to see Sandra. She was a foreign exchange student too, and for a full year she rode to school with me every day in my big gray pickup truck because uh, she didn't like to go on the bus. So I got to see Sandra, a uh, wonderful musician. Uh, one, you, you'll, you'll be able to see the, the, the place is Gelterkinden, that's the town, uh, it's near Liestal. Uh, if you know your uh, geography very well at all, you might know where Basel, Basel is, uh, Switzerland. Well, I was surprised to find that there at Basel, there was a Roman Basel. And uh, we go up, we hike up above Gelterkinden to a uh, hilltop uh, and visit a, a uh, well, there, there is the ruins of a Roman wall there, that's what surprised me. And you'll see the photographs that Erica took up there. Uh, the, the next day, she and I had parted ways by, by the next morning. And she uh, hikes to another ruin uh, with Daniel and uh, his, his father, I think. Uh, it's been since closed because it was regarded as too hazardous, I think. But anyway, we part ways. Uh, Daniel and Erica put me on a train and off I head for northern Germany. I'll tell you about that probably tomorrow or next time. And Erica, later that morning, she and Daniel accompanies her uh, as far as Lake Geneva. And they go on what's called the Golden Pass. I had wanted her to take that route because I had done that once and I knew how scenic it was. I'll tell you more about that in just a moment. So the last photographs you'll see in the next uh, uh, video will be of her from the train coming down and you will see Lake Geneva again in the area of Montreux. I, I think that's the way they pronounce it. I always said Montreux, but I think they pronounce it Montreux. Uh, all right, um, now this all, oh, and then from Geneva, she's, uh, near Geneva, she stays with uh, uh, a fam uh, American family, close friends of hers. And then she travels by train back to Paris, visits uh, uh, Chartres, which you'll see uh, next time and then flies on home and is there to wait for me when I get there. Okay, uh, now all of this, I, I, I'm giving you a route. If you want to try to travel uh, in Switzerland, here is what I would say. Here's a route that I would recommend. If you wanted to travel remotely my way, without renting a car, without being part of a tour, fly into Geneva, get a Swiss pass. I guess I didn't write that on there. Don't get a Eurail pass, get what's called a Swiss pass. That allows you to be on any trains or uh, postal buses in Switzerland. Uh, you could stay the night in Geneva, 
and visit Geneva if you want to. It's an interesting city, but it is a city, and it's not my style. You could actually fly into Geneva and that very same day make it all the way to Osterberg, which if you've seen my videos, you should know very well now. There I would stay a day. I would stay there probably two nights and uh, go to see the Matterhorn. Uh, it's right down below Osterberg, it's Wiesbe, and there you get the train. It goes up to Zermatt, and uh, that's where the Matterhorn is. But consider the weather. You, you may not be able to see it. The Hotel Bahnhof is, uh, I don't own stock in these hotels, but I'm giving you names. They have always treated me very well. From there I would travel to Andermatt. In this series, uh, we don't do that, but I've done that often. Andermatt is over the Furka Pass. I don't think you could do that by bus, I don't, postal bus, I don't think, maybe. Uh, but the tr So the train ends up ultimately going through a tunnel. You wouldn't get to see the Rhone Glacier at the top of the Furka Pass unless you uh, took a, a, rented a car or, or, or took the bus. It could be done, I'm sure. Anyway, there I would stay the night in Andermatt, and I would recommend this hotel, but only really because I know it. Uh, I'll give you a name. It's Schweitzerhof. So if you go online, you can find that. Uh, I stayed there once with a group of uh, students, and it was fine. And what's really nice about this hotel is if you go behind it, out, uh, out the door, up the street a little ways, and take a path, you can be walking up in... Uh, Alpine Meadows uh, with the cows, and it's, it's uh, do that if you uh, stay there, by all means do that. And uh, f also from there, you can walk down to the Devil's Bridge, uh, which is just a little ways down uh, a shluk, they call it. Uh, this is the Gotthard Pass that you're on. And uh, I walked down there early in the morning, the last time I was there, and I, there was no one there. It was a, there was no one there. And in my own way, I think it's as dramatic as Niagara Falls. That's my take on it, the roar of it, the height of it. Uh, I walked down the, the, well, there's a path along the road, and there were no cars, there were no buses, there was nobody. I was there uh, all by myself. A wonderful place. You, you really don't want to miss that. You could walk all the way down then to where... Um, you pick up the regular train again or go back and there is a very small private train that will take you down through the Schluck to, uh, to uh, uh, near Vossen, maybe it is Vossen, where you get on the other train. Then I would take the train and stay the night at Brunnen on uh, uh, Lake Lucerne or the Fiebertsetterzee, the, the five forest state seat. Uh, that's my choice, and, and the Eden Hotel, I've stayed there two or three times. These are not expensive hotels. Uh, it's right down on the lake, that would be my recommendation there. Then I would continue to travel. The Swiss Pass lets you travel by, uh, uh, by ship as well, down the lakes. Uh, or by train to, to Lucerne, I would go by ship, <laughs> if it were me. Uh, it's steamships, sometimes, uh, some of them are steamships, uh, to Lucerne. I, don't, I would not stay long in Lucerne myself. I would then get on the train and go up to Brunig, up to the Brunig Pass. Uh, this is now part of the Golden Pass, uh, known as the Golden Pass. Uh, and it's the train ride that Erica didn't take. There's only maybe the first two or, or three uh, photographs she took in this uh, video will be uh, what you'd see on the Brunig Pass. And there my choice would be the Brunig Kuhn Hotel. Hotel Brunig Kuhn. Kuhn. This could be U-E. It's, it's U with an umlaut over it, but in, in English, I think you're going to have to just ignore that and look it up this way. There you are within a very short bus ride, or train ride, uh, to Ballenberg. Bus ride. Uh, to Ballenberg. Or, if you wanted to, you could go to uh, Meringen. Uh, if you wanted to spend a little more time and, and go see the, the falls, Reichen, Reichenbach Falls, uh, it's very near, and there's also a, a gorge, a flume. Uh, there, there's several things to do there. But I would stay there and then, uh, of course, spend a day. I spent a full day at the Ballenberg Museum, not just two hours or three hours like we did, a full day. Then, uh, then travel on... Uh, uh, and and uh, if you if, especially if you had two days here, you could then include the Eiger and Lauterbrunnen, the highest waterfall 
in Switzerland and the Eiger, the north face of the Eiger is so famous, but you'd need to watch the weather to see if it was worth your, your while. I would say it would be. Uh, then you could either just keep going through Spitz uh, to Montreux and then, or Montreux, and that's where you'll see Erica is, and then on to Geneva. That could be done in a day, easily. Or you could go back to Oseberg, almost like back to home. Go back through and down the Sutramp to Oseberg for a second night, a fifth night. And then from there, either straight to Geneva or back through, and I would say back through and do the Golden Pass to Geneva. And you might end up having to spend a night in Geneva, I don't know, right by the train station. I, this comes to mind, the Ibis Hotel. I stayed in a hotel there once. It's going to be probably more expensive and then fly back. That could easily be done in a week, uh, maybe even in five days. It's my kind of travel. That's my recommendation uh, to you. And at some point I wanted to tell you this. It's kind of a mess, but maybe you can follow it. <clears throat> I'll see you next time.